Hello again, welcome back to Let's Fly Kerbal Space Program. Uh, this is Space Shuttle Development. By my count, we're up to probably part 19, maybe part 20. It's difficult to know before I actually edit some of the stuff that I recorded earlier. Um, Yes, one thing that's kind of weird, whenever I'm in, in wanting to increase the, the rate at which I produce these, I end up recording now several days in advance, so um, many of these very intelligent, very intelligent comments that people give me just um, aren't relevant because I had them so long ago. But that's, please continue, keep doing the comments, but any case, I intend this to be, if not the final video, at least the final day of working on this one. I'm, uh, we have our super duper shuttle. We've got it technically functioning. It'll launch, it'll re-enter, it'll land. It just needs a few more tweaks to make it a, a, a mature technology, a real effective vehicle. So let's do it. Okay, let's take a look at the whole thing to, just to remind myself of everything that I need. There's rock lander. I was messing around with that. That's in its airplane configuration, but the rock. Which, if you didn't know, is a mythological bird that's supposed to be large enough to lift an elephant, carry it away, and eat it. So, and I'm intending this to be my heavy lifter. So, here we go. Okay, let's move all these windows out of the way. So, issues that I need to address. We still haven't tried launching it with a heavy payload in there, because I anticipate having to tweak the the thrust values and fuel values of the of the main engine of the uh, of the central fuel of the external fuel tank and the solid rocket boosters in order to balance it for launching my what is my goal 100 tons of payload uh, on top of working with that uh, we also had the problems with stability with the airplane after re-entry as being very difficult to pilot then a uh, couple of things we can do about that is we I believe I believe that the stability issues that we're going to have there's two fixes that I want to do I'll do a couple of them right now uh, let's get into yeah let's open up our FAR settings the first thing uh, these I was using these as elevons so that they, they control pitch and roll I tell you what I want those to be just pitch update thank you I mean, just roll. Yeah, sometimes I say the wrong thing. I don't even realize it till afterwards. <laughs> okay, that that should help with the uh, really wild oscillations. But you, you make a small control mo control move, you know, by using the keyboard, and the thing just pitches wildly. The other is we do need more mass up front. Take that off of there, like that. Uh, save subassembly. This goes in lifters. This is rock booster stack. And get rid of it there. Uh, let's get rid of our whole launch stability enhancers. We don't need those. Okay, take a look at center of mass, center of lift. And as it burns fuel, the, we don't have the, the fuel and everything perfectly balanced, so the center of mass does move backwards. The center of lift does not move. Uh, we need more weight up front. I mean, I could make the entire nose longer. I've, 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 it has, it's occurred to me that maybe this could use more of a crew tank. like how the game takes so long to attach to that one, huh? Um... Okay, well I think I moved that... I moved that ahead some, didn't it? That's actually, that's not so bad, is it? If we went to three, that'd probably be too long, but this actually makes it look slightly more sleek and graceful and... and uh, by adding more weight up here all the way up front that definitely helps the other thing that i was considering is i could take my nose my nose wheel part and i could just add mass to that but uh that is that idea isn't as attractive to me because it would be just useless mass this is actually useful mass 
Uh, let's take a look. Can we also add some more utility to this thing? Give it another docking port. Total mass 0.1. Turn that mirroring off. Could even put it like between the two hatches so we can still use both those hatches. I don't know, that thing is still ugly. <laughs> ugly, ugly, ugly. Get rid of it. I don't like ugly on my airplanes. Okay. So we'll see if just those two small differences make this into um, a better airplane. Okay, yeah, there's the change whenever it's launching, and I saw how fast the, the engine gimbal was changing. It'd, it'd pull back, and then it'd snap down all of a sudden. And there's one one character, uh, one, one guy, one viewer, that's the word I'm looking for. One viewer was named Assassin AC. Anyway, he had the, the, um, the idea to, he said to go ahead and change the gimbal speed on this. So, I think we're going to do that. I'm not... But I've never played around with gimbal speeds. Let me see. We already saved this, right? Let's do something. Let's do an experimental kind of test rig in order to play around with engine gimbal things. And I just need one fuel tank. Any fuel tank. How about that one? It's as good as any. And I need one engine. Just how about this one? Any old engine will work because all this thing is going to do is I just want to watch it gimbal. Okay, so this one, uh, let's get down here to module gimbal. Let's change this. Uh, gimbal range. Let's, let's give ourselves the ability to change all of these things. Gimbal range 0 0.5 to 20 and steps of 0 0.5. Gimbal response speed. I don't know. Um, see, it's it's not readily visible what the response speed of its stock is. So I don't know. Um, so let's just go a minimum of 0 0.1 and a maximum of say 10. I'm just guessing here. I have no idea what these values do. And steps of 0.1. Good. Add. And oh, I think I forgot to do that one. And those, I believe, those just give it the momentary gimbal angle at any particular moment. I don't want to mess with those if, if I understand the way that works. Gimbal response. Okay, first of all, gimbal range. Let's drop it down to, say, 10. Enough to give us a good visible indication of what's happening. Actually, no, I'll tell you what. Let's go to 15. Something that we might conceivably use on a shuttle for doing this. Gimbal response speed, let's, let's kind of be systematic about it. Let's drop it all the way down to the bottom of the range, 0 0.1. See what that does. There's my lonely <laughs> little test rig. Okay, so now we pitch... Oh, okay, so look at that. It just, uh, let's go to precision control. Uh, with precision control, yeah, this looks pretty close to the stock yeah stock gimbal response speed I, I really don't like the way it just snaps back like that but stop okay well now let's revert flight and get back in here and change some more values uh, let's raise our value all the way up to just one and see what that does Okay, here we are. Turn precision control back on. Launch it. Get a visible plume. Okay, at one. Okay, larger numbers. It looks like it responds faster, but we. It looks like we're still going to have this sudden snap back, though. But I like how it seems to be smoother. Let's turn precision control off. Precision control off would still. It, it'll instantly instantly change direction okay yeah let's max out the speed uh, yeah speed value take it all the way up to 10 we should and we should if I'm understanding the way this works I should see this thing responding fairly slowly throttle up some and pitch back that doesn't really look n now that looks 
Yeah, that is kind of slower than last time. I think it is anyway. Am I am I fooling myself in thinking this? And was I early, in the earlier test? Did it look like it was moving slower just because I wanted it to move move slower? Might be worth going back and checking the tape. Okay, uh, yeah, I just went and I took a look at what was recorded and I ran two videos side by side. One of the, right, of it traveling, uh, of it, the gimbal, the gimbal response speed. Yeah, was that, was that the actual term? Yeah, yeah gimbal response speed at 0 0.1, the other one at 10, and they were actually identical. I was just fooling myself earlier that that made a change. So I wonder what does this field actually do? I mean, there's no visible change in in the behavior. You'd think that, however, it, it scaled. You'd see a difference between 0 0.1 and 10. Okay, but but then it, it, I think it it wasn't wasn't really necessary. It ended up that a uh, you know. Our shuttle was perfectly controllable. Uh, all this rigmarole that I've been doing all this time with angling the engines over and playing around with, you know, uh, doing the thrust with the, uh, you know, uh, with the, the damned robotics hinges. Uh, I think with our, our new, some of the, the smoothed out uh, vessel control that has, been, that has been worked in the game in recent updates, I think a lot of that is no longer necessary. Uh, we can we can make this work just fine, as is. Okay, so well, that simplifies things. I don't ha I don't feel the need to mess around with the gimbal response anymore. Okay, so is my flight engineer is it keeping up? Here's our total mass, 406 uh, thrust to weight ratio as it first launches. This is when those boosters light off is 1.06. Actually, kind of which is enough, but I'd, I'd want it to be a little bit more. Especially if we, we're going to add some more weight to the thing, huh? Okay, first, let's uh, redo a whole bunch of struts. And then we'll go in and we'll look at putting a, a big heavy payload in there and see what kind of lifting stats we get out of that. Oh, I see. It's because we don't have this fuel line run yet. That's a large part of the... Oh, it's for its thrust weight ratio, 1.06. And it's figuring that before when we don't even have the main engine running. Hang on, let's fix that and see what happens, huh? Attach that one right there. Good. Okay, now what we're looking at, or is this going to take its time? To total delta V of over 5,000. It still hasn't changed our figures for thrust to weight ratio, though. Is that that's interesting? Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe the calculator doesn't know that this engine can't get any fuel from the internal tanks. That makes sense. Okay, so now we are all re-strutted. All strutified. All over the place. Lots and lots of struts. Okay, now let's take a look at... Let me see, we're having problems with our test payloads going in there exploding. Uh, I think, I wonder if maybe some of that may have been changed a uh, I went and I decided to put this launch clamp right there, uh, directly supporting the fuselage of the vehicle. Let's try this. So assembly, I remember I put that under probes. Large test weight, thank you. Let's flip it around this direction. Oh, that's right, uh, turn mirroring off. I think I also want part clipping disabled. Yes, I know. Shock, gasp. I can do things without part clipping if I have to. Just most time I don't want to. Okay, so yeah, the mass. We've got it, so it's just about exactly, yeah, our, our test weight's just about exactly 100 tons. Now, but our thrust to weight ratio dropped down to 0.85. And it looks like we also do not have enough delta V. How about that, huh? This seems like a problem. 
Let's do... Okay, first thing I want to do is we're going to get even more thrust out of these SRBs. Even more! Uh, courier 1, solid fuel boosters. And let's pull this over here. Yeah, we already... Okay, what's this? Adjustment range. Well, that's the gimbal range. Yeah, we don't want a lot of gimbal out of those. Um, okay, let's give them another 1,000 thrust apiece. I mean, I mean, another 1,000 thrust total, so like 500 apiece. Okay, now is this, is this going to show up, make a difference? To my engineer, I think my engineer gets confused whenever I change numbers. And that thing. We may have to increase a delta V, maybe adding more fuel. More thrust, more fuel, more weight. It's the whole rocket equation going on, you know? Okay, that looks like it is very excessively strutted down in place. <laughs> okay, stand her up on her nose. And yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Uh, yeah, save it again. And launch it and find out what kind of bad things happen. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Wait for the physics to load. Explode! Oh, something's exploding. Oh, very bad news. Oh, it's kind of... Oh, it's kind of almost... Slow motion and almost peaceful. Timber! Like a f very large tree falling. And my two Kerbals survived. Isn't that awesome? Alright, what happened? What broke? Structural failure between advanced SRB and advanced SRB. And notice it's between the little ones and the big ones.